Welcome to lecture 12.2 on the power rule for calculus for business and social science. <clears throat> so we saw in a previous section that the integral or the antiderivative for a power function is as follows. So when we're taking the integral of something raised to the power of n, <clears throat> the integral or the antiderivative of this is increasing the power by 1 and then multiplying that function by 1 over the power plus 1. And then, of course, we add the constant of integration. <clears throat> but what happens if our derivative is from a composite function? Then we need to evaluate its effect on the integration, specifically a function inside of a function. So here, notice we have a power function, something raised to the power of 2, but inside is also another function. So the derivative of the derivative f prime of x, if this is f of x, equals 2 times 3x squared plus 2, that quantity, times the quantity of the derivative inside, which is 6x from the 3x squared. Or we get the final answer of 12x times 3x squared plus 2. So by definition, since an integral is an antiderivative, the integral of our answer above, 12x times the quantity of 3x squared plus 2 dx, remember what we're integrating with respect to, which variable, is going to equal our original function equals 3x squared plus 2, all raised to the power of 2. <clears throat> Notice that when we do the integral, the integrand here has to include both the inner function and the derivative of the inner function in order to get back to the original function. So it includes um, the inner function and a derivative of this inner function. This gives us an alternative form of the power rule, which we use specifically for composite functions. And so that when I have a composite function raised to a power of n, and I also have the derivative inside of the integrand, then this simply equals, uh, similar to what we saw with the power rule, the entire function raised to the power of n plus 1, or the exponent plus 1, all over the exponent plus 1. And again, our constant of integration. Using this notation from the prior problem, we see the integral of 12x times the quantity of 3x squared plus 2. If we do some substitution here and we make the inside function u, 3x squared plus 2, and the derivative of that is 6x dx, right? If we take the derivative of this, and then we get n equals 1, which is the power on the function here. It's the power on the composite function. Again, the integral has included the inner function and the derivative of this. In this substitution, it can help to think of derivatives in more of a rational notation. For example, <clears throat> if y equals f of x, then the derivative of y equals, with respect to x, equals f prime x. Or if we multiply both sides of this equation by dx, the denominator, we get dy, the change in y, equals f prime dx. Okay? That may not make sense yet, but so again, as long as we have a composite function raised to a power and its derivative in the integrand, then we have a simple solution for this integral. So let's look at this. Let's try a couple examples. The first thing we want to do is identify the power function or the u. Okay, so we can see here that we're raising something to a power of five. So this is our u, our substitution. So u equals the inner function here. 5x cubed minus 5, and we can see that the power on that is, is 5. It's also raised to the power of 5. <clears throat> Excuse me. Then we want to find the derivative of the inner function, and this is where that notational piece where we had dy and the dx on the other side. <clears throat> this is just a convenience for writing our integral in proper form. The derivative of u then is 15x squared dx. And this would be du dx multiplying both sides by the dx. This is really more notational. This is one of those magical bits of calculus where even though du dx is a notational piece, it actually works as a fraction to help us solve these problems and do some shortcuts. So then we substitute in the part. So 
the original integral simply equals the integral of u to the 5 du, and you can see all those pieces there. We've done substitution before. <clears throat> so then we simply use the composite rule up here in the yellow. So we get u to the 6 over 6 plus c, and then we substitute back in for u. And so here is our final solution. We can always check any answer to an integral by taking the derivative of this function and seeing if we get back to the original, which again, you can see that we do here and we do. Let's look at another example. Let's take the integral of the square root of 2x plus 3 times 2dx. Okay. <clears throat> again, remember that a radical is actually raised to a power, an exponential. We can rewrite radicals as powers, and this would be 2x plus 3 to the 1 half power. We identify the power function as whatever we're raising. Remember what's inside being raised to a power. And we get 2x plus 3, and our exponent there is 1 half. We find the derivative of that, which is just 2dx, and then once again we see that we have all the pieces we need. We substitute in the parts, verifying all matches, so we get um, 2x plus 3, the square root of 2x plus 3 times 2dx is equal to u to the power of 1 half, which means the square root, which we see there, um, du, and remember du equals 2dx, so it substitutes in for here. We solve using the composite rule, rule excuse me, so it's um, the exponent plus 1, which gives us 3 halves, all over the exponent plus 1, which is 3 halves. Remember, 1 over a fraction means the reciprocal of that. So this becomes 2 thirds times 2x plus 3 to the 3 halves plus c. Again, using our constant, taking the integral to check, excuse me, the derivative to check, we get back to our original equation. All right, let's try another. Might be a good idea um, to stop listening right now and actually put it on pause and try this problem yourself. Identify the inner problem or the inner power function. This is usually pretty easy with these because they're usually in parentheses. So we get the inner function here, 5x to the fourth plus 11. We can see the power is 9. The derivative of that is very simple, 20x cubed dx. We substitute in the parts. And now we have a problem. Okay. So notice what, what's happening here is we're missing. We have the x cubed. We have the 5x to the fourth plus 11 but we don't have this factor of 20. Now remember that when we're integrating a constant times a function, we can pull that constant outside of the integral or outside of the derivative, all right? So notice if I add 20 into our original equation and also multiply by one over 20, that these two terms, these two factors cancel out. One over 20 times 20 is one. So notice if I pull out the 120 on the outside, if I move this one to the outside, I now have my substitution. I have 20x cubed, which is the du. I have 5x fourth plus 11, which is my u raised to the power of 9. And because of the rule of derivatives and integrals allows me to pull out constants, all I had to do was offset any number that I was missing, and in this case, the number 20. So then I just solve using the composite rule. Uh, 1 over 20 times the integral of u to the 9th is 1 over 20 times u to the 10th over 10. And so I end up with this function here. Again, I can check. And when I check, I get back to my original function or integrand. Let's do it again. Here I have x squared plus 4 raised to the power of 2. First thing we're going to do, identify the inner function u to the x squared plus 4 and equals 2. Find the derivative of the inner function. This is pretty simple, 2x dx, and now we want to substitute in the parts. Well, when I look at this, I, again, I have a part that's missing. I only have a dx. I do not have the 2x. Now, it would be really um, normal, <laughs> and if I could, it'd be nice to add the 2x in and then multiply by 1 over 2x like we did with the 20 last time. But remember, we don't have a mechanism for pulling a variable outside of an integral or a variable outside of a derivative. So we cannot solve this um, integral 
using this method. Okay, we cannot solve this integral using this method. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can only offset numbers because the rule says that uh, the integral of a constant times a function is equal to the constant times the integral of the function, meaning we can pull constants out. Here, since this is not a constant, it's a variable term, we're kind of stuck. So what could we do? Well, look, this is a very simple equation, a simple polynomial that I could FOIL. And if I FOIL it out, I get something much more simple to integrate. I get a sum. And remember, I can separate each part and take the integral of each, which is x to the fifth over 5. Here I get 8x cubed over 3. And here I get 16x plus c. This one was actually much easier, I think, to actually just multiply out and then find the answer. If I take the derivative, I get back to my integrand. All right, I think we have one or two more problems to do. Not really sure. Let's set. All right, let's see what happens here. So let's take find the inner function. Again, it's the one that's being raised to a power. And here we have 2x squared minus 4x, and our power is 2. That's just aligning these bits with our basic formula. Find the derivative of the inner function. This would be du. And notice I get 4x minus 4 which I can also rewrite as 4 times the quantity of x minus 1 dx. Now, why do I want to do that? Because I have x minus 1 dx in my original integrand. So the only thing that's missing now is my 4. So remember, when I add the 4 in, I need to offset it with a reciprocal outside. So by adding 4 inside and 1 fourth outside, I now have all the parts I need. Here's my du, and there's my u. <clears throat> That's weird. So I notice what I've done here. What have I done here? Um, again, I have one fourth times the power raised to a um, raised to the exponent plus one over the exponent plus one which gives me this function here at the end. And when I take the derivative of this function, I get back to my original function. Okay, not sure why I didn't do the substitution here, but you can try that on your own.